Hi Porsche fans that want to take your car on the racetrack. This is a Porsche 987 uh, Cayman S and I'm Raf. And I'm going to be walking you through why I decided to get this. Well, in the previous video I showed you guys that I decided to just ghetto rig install a couple of gauges. One of them didn't even, uh, well the one wasn't totally necessary, really I only needed one. But, you know, I had contemplated getting this whole setup, and I'll be showing you guys how I'm going to finish it up today. But, a little pressure gauge, and a button wheel or raceway. There's a few turns that, according to the stuff on the forums, and people's experiences, that the oil pickup on these cars gets uncovered for a, you know, split second or five, <laughs> depending on how you want to look at it. When the engine pickup gets uncovered and the oil pressure goes down, this gets dumped into the oil. It lubricates the engine while you have a loss of oil pressure. It's only a couple seconds and this isn't a huge change. So the kit I purchased, because you can buy the AccuSump itself and then buy the adapter separately, but I went to patrickmotorsports.com and it comes with, this is really a kit intended to install the AccuSump in the trunk with the, the remote mount filter also in the trunk. What we're going to do is going to be installing it under the car. Get started with any of the more involved things. Let's do something simple. We are installing the AccuSump kit today, but this is a, a jack point, a rear jack point for a, a Fab Speed Motorsport makes this. If you just Google Porsche rear jack point, maybe type in Boxster there, it'll it'll pop up. Really, this is only used to uh, you know, to place rear jacks. Two. Yank. All right, we're good. Let me jack up the car. First gear and uh, first gear reverse. One, two, three. Six. Okay, that's eight. Okay, so what I'm going to do is bend it from the middle. And we're out. So you bend it from the middle, pull forward, and release this, uh, this last corner, and it pops out. We've got a few 10mm uh, nuts. There's the nylon kind. Okay. It is captured back here with uh, a tab. I think that was 11 of them. Yep. Might as well show you guys how I do it without removing this. So once that's loose, same thing, pull it down from the middle. Pull the tabs forward, out of the slots, and it falls on your face. Okay, is it a 10 mil? Yes it is. And a couple of T25s.
Yeah, you should definitely have, uh, either close your eyes or have some safety glasses on. There's plenty of dust and rocks under here. Now to drill the big holes. Okay. Yeah, luckily there's nothing back here for me to run into. Like, still, uh, the bottom one, I've left a little bit loose, just so I could, uh, maneuver it. Then I'll mark it off with, uh, some Sharpie. Anyway. Got the tape on the ends there to keep them clean. Alright, looking good. No. The pressure relief valve is installed. I installed one of these half inch to flare fittings. Okay. I'll leave the brackets immediately after. I also got the fasteners here, ready to go. Okay, front end. I have here to hold the wire. It's not gonna go here. Okay. Drop. Way too easy. Place the front holder, front bracket. Three eighths uh, inch drill bit. Same thing, got some cooling water right next to me. Oh, that's wrong. There we go. Through. Not one of the holes for the mounts. 
really what I can tell you is line it up towards the the outside there. It's a little jiggling and it's through. cute line to make. This one's pretty short. This is just what straddles the uh, transmission. Yeah, I'm going to angle them down so that they don't touch the transmission in case it shakes during shifts. A measurement of the sump, the Aki sump to the EPC hose, or EPC valve. Fifty-seven and a half. Over the rail you've got here, and then start to feed in here up through to that, next to the hoses. Got the oil line hooked up. If you're clever, you can get your wrench in there. Test fitted these now, and they fit just fine. The only thing I noticed was these uh, the bolts were too short. But for you guys to make it easy, give you the lengths on these final. From red to red for the return side, we'll call that 22, and fitting to fitting on the pressure side, call that 18 and 3 quarters. Twenty-two versus eighteen and three quarters. Eighteen and three quarters is the uh, the pressure side, the one that's got the check valve on it. So eighteen and three quarters is the pressure side with the check valve. It's just fine. So bolt it there, and then rail comes along. Not touching this plastic. There's enough space there. You're gone. Now I'm free to drill. Got a one and a quarter hole dozer, hole saw, and then uh, got a boot. This requires a one and a quarter hole. Since today I intend to start the engine, we'll need to have power for the solenoid. It's running some 16 gauge all the way back there. Well, that dribbles down. Got the new adapter here. Allen Engineering spin on adapter. I got a little bit of oil still on the on the ring there. This is supposed to get spun in and torqued down to 18, 18 foot pounds. an extension for this. Uh, 
Okay, time for the torque wrench. You do have to install these uh, straight fittings. Use Teflon tape on this. That's what's pretty cool about this, you can rotate this in whatever direction you need. So you have to wrestle with the lines a little bit, but make sure you thread them on by hand to start. You can relieve the pressure, you know, feel where it's uh, leaning towards and try to center it as best you can. Two are on. So we need to tuck them up. We'll move this as far this way as we can to clear that exhaust. We started the engine up and we passed. Yeah, the only drip is from me being an idiot and uh, spilling a little bit of oil during filling. But I ended up adding a, an extra quart. Well, I put. I put 500 milliliters in here just to pre-fill it, screwed it on, added an entire quart to the top of the engine, you know, the regular fill hole. But nah, no leaks. Let's take a look at the front. there either. Alright, so time to close up the wires, button everything down. Finishing up the wiring here. Yeah, zip tied to that. And it came down. I ended up just using one of these hose clamps here on the here on my rail. And then I used the the hose separator clamp to keep that together. So this is held to the rail and then that holds the other one down. And from there we got I just ran the rest of the cabling along that rail. You guys can see it. And then obviously one of them connects there to the uh, Center and the other continues. My thought was, if it's safe enough to r to run the oil line, it's safe enough to run the cabling. So that's it. Okay, so add this and just give it a twist. This is to give me the, the right angle. Should look like that when you're finished. Yeah, it took a little convincing, but got it aligned correctly. Yeah, we'll fully seat it once the uh, the hose clamp, the hose separator is attached. Now you've got to make sure it captures both this side. And that side. Yeah, I just really like the fact that it ended up being, I was contemplating, you know, running another rail, but once I saw, spotted this, uh, that's just a factory hole in the, the engine block. Yeah, luckily, I, I was able to find a bolt that threaded through and... Okay, we have 
close. If you're the first person to watch this, this is definitely July 2nd, 2016. Uh, really what I want to tell you guys is I've ran into a small issue uh, with editing a video. I had a shitload of footage and I want to figure out exactly what you guys are interested in looking at. I'm definitely going to be covering the, well, the parts required, the fabrication, and then the problems that I ran into. But, well, you know, something like this. I'll show you guys. The uh, AccuSump is not dumping when it should. I ended up cleaning up the install. That'll be another future video, but I clicked the uh, switch on. More operation. Like, I've never had an AccuSump before, especially not one with an EPC valve. Uh, this is my indicator light, and it would uh, give me like a, you know, a really quick flash. It wasn't like a steady on. I don't know if maybe that's how they work, but uh, I concluded that it's it does not uh, dump the pressure when I, the ignition's on, like right now. I was on the phone with the Canton Motorsports. They're going to be sending out another switch for me. Uh, they concluded that, you know, they got a faulty one.